Um, okay, speaking of very preliminary announcements, I have another preliminary announcement that I would like to that I would like to talk about, which relates to large events in the summer. So as I've explained, it is my hope and intention, if everybody stays at home between now and May 8th, on May 9th to enter phase one. As I've also explained, phase one will have a limit on the number of people in social gatherings, 10 or fewer. Phase two will be 15 or fewer. And then we'll get to the business of phase three and phase four. So the question that I'm getting a lot of every single day is, hey, Governor, what about big summer events? And that is a question I would like to endeavor to answer, but I want to warn you that it's not a perfect answer. But since I'm hearing, I'm trying every day to just respond to the, real, to the needs of people on the ground in Rhode Island, and so I'm going to give this a shot. If you're planning a very large summer gathering, a 4th of July parade, a large music festival, a you know, huge cultural event with hundreds and hundreds of people, you are not going to be able to have that event in the state of Rhode Island this summer with those people in person. Um, that is a killer announcement for me to have to make, and my stomach is in a knot as I think about Aquidneck Island and Newport and Westerly and the, Bristol for the 4th of July parade and the Newport Folk Festival and all of the events that we have that make Rhode Island great and quite frankly that buoy our tourism economy. But in good conscience, I cannot stand here and tell you that you're going to be able to have those events in June, in July, in August in the way that you had hoped to have. So I'm asking you now to prepare yourselves to make alternative plans. And I am so sorry to have to say that. I know tourism is a central part of the economy. And I'm going to go back to what I said earlier about the COVID relief funds. It is not out of the question that we will find a way to use some of that to help our tourism industry, our hospitality industry, because I know this is going to be really challenging. I'm also getting a lot of questions about weddings, you know, and I know from personal experience, a wedding is, can be the, one of the best days of your life. It's for you and your family and your friends beginning a life together. Some people plan it for a year or two. It's probably the most expensive expenditure you'll make in a lifetime or one of them, and it's meant to be your special day. Um, having said that, if you are planning a summer wedding in June, in July, um, of greater than 50 people, uh, it's, it's not likely you're going to be able to have that wedding in person this summer in Rhode Island if it's 50 people or more. There's an outside possibility that when we get to August, we might be in a place where we lift the social gatherings from, say, 50 to 100. And so it's possible that in August you could have a wedding with 100 people. But I can't promise you that now. And so I wanted to start the business of letting you make your plans. Um, I will later this week be uh, making this guidance more official. But I know that a lot of you are planning right now. I know that especially for the concerts and festivals, you're wondering, um, you know, some of you have contracts that are due, and I just thought it was the right thing to do to let you know this summer concerts cannot happen, festivals cannot happen, parades cannot happen. Um, it's just not safe especially if we want, as I do, to get our kids back to school in the fall, it's really important that we take it easy this summer so we don't have an outbreak. And for weddings, like I said, if it was a small wedding, you, may be, you probably will be able to have it, 
50 or fewer. But if you were planning a wedding with hundreds of people, you probably want to think about rescheduling. And I, uh, I've, we've been in touch with the Hospitality Association. Uh, we have been told by the Hospitality Association that many venues are being extremely flexible. Uh, and I'm so grateful for that. I will say this is, this is a tough call. My heart goes out to both sides, the, the couples and the families, as well as the venues. So I will leave it to you to negotiate those private contracts. I will ask all of you to be flexible and creative. And I hope that by giving you some guidance in April, uh, it allows you to begin now to start making summer plans. I have no doubt just generated many more questions than I have answered. What about churches? What about you know, other events? What about cultural events in the fall? Um, I'm going to ask for a little patience. It's very hard for us to know now what life's going to look like in Rhode Island in September. So I'm going to ask you to hang on a little bit for that. Uh, and, and as I say, keep tuning in every day, because every day as I consult with experts, talk to other states, learn more about where we are, I'll be providing more information.